patient, kind, and true. No other friend in the world will be the same to you. When other friends forsake you, a mother. You can only have one mother, patient, kind, and true. No other friend in the world will be the same to you. When other friends forsake you, to mother you will return. For all her loving kindness, she asks nothing in return. As we look upon her picture, sweet memories we recall of a face so full of sunshine and a smile for one and all. Sweet Jesus, take this message to our dear mother up above. Tell her how we miss her and give her all our love. We now continue with the eulogy, which will be delivered by Ms. Kennifer James. Pleasant good afternoon to all. Julie J. Charles, better known as Joan, or Miss Joan, was born on the 26th day of August. 1963 to Anita Jechals and Camille Fersois of Tiroche Miku. She grew up in Tiroche up until the age of 15 and then moved to Lahuville Miku. She attended the Miku Junior Secondary School. As a young girl growing up, Julie dreamt of becoming a nurse. However, she was unable to pursue higher education due to life's challenges. But in as much as she was unable or she did not have tertiary education, she ensured that her children were well educated and always did her part in ensuring that even their grammar was correct when they spoke. She would consistently correct them even when they were adults. At a young age, Julie fell in love and then she got pregnant with her first child. And then she had two more children later on. After her third child, she got married. However, she later moved on from that relationship and fell in love again with Mr. James Vital. And then she bore her last child. Julie was a mother of four, two girls, two boys, and she was stepmother to seven of us. Julie loved her family very much and was very involved in the lives of her children and her grandchildren. Her first daughter, Marlies, recalls all the times that her mother visited her at hospital after giving birth and helping her at home for months caring for her children. Her mom would frequently come over until she felt like Marlies was able to manage on her own. Joan wasn't just loving and caring, but she was also a very peaceful person, not quick to anger at all. Her children rarely heard her respond to situations that she did not initiate. Quarreling was not her thing. Miss Joan was a very hard working person. She worked tirelessly to provide and care for her family. She was a woman who wore many hats. She was a farmer, an entrepreneur, a market vendor, and a seamstress to name a few. And she was very good at what she did. Her first job as recalled by, by Marlies was carrying props a great distance with her son on her back. Also, she was a good seamstress. Marlies also recalls that her mother sold her son's first school shirt while relating to her childhood. And it was then that she learned 
and her mom also hand sewn the dress that her younger sister wore on the day that she went to Cayenne. A while back, Joan would make leatherette bags and she would take them to the market in view for to sell. She made lovely bouquets out of plastic soft drink bottles. Creative she was indeed. Miss Joan was a good caretaker. In as much as she did not pursue the nursing career, she remained a nurse at heart. She wholeheartedly, without complaining, took care of her father after he fell ill. She also took care of her mother who was also ill and nursed her back to health. Judy was known as the family doctor, the go-to person whenever there was illness, and her meds were indeed on point. As a market vendor selling in the market in Viewfort on Saturdays, she sold grand provisions, fruits, cocoa sticks, green seasoning, vegetables, spices, coconut oil, confectionery, confectionery and more. Julie Joan Jer Charles was indeed a beautiful person, both inside and outside, to her partner, her family, her children, her grandchildren, her stepchildren, even the children of her stepchildren. According to her children, our mother was a kind, compassionate, patient, and selfless person, an angel with hazel eyes. She was a smart and extremely hard-working woman who did not know the word rest, even when she was begged to do so. She may be gone, but in the heart of her younger daughter, Leanne, she will forever be her best friend, her counselor, her photographer, and her number one believer in her dreams. And as a stepdaughter, I can personally attest to Miss Julie being a loving and hardworking woman. She worked just as hard with my father in contributing to me having proper education as well. And for that, I will forever be grateful. Julie, Joan, Je Charles will indeed be dearly missed by her family and her friends. May she rest in perfect peace.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I bless the body of Julie Jean Charles with holy water. That recalls the baptism of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him so that just as Christ was raised from the death by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall be we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. In the waters of baptism, Julie Jean Charles died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. We now turn to the first hymn on the leaflet, How Great Thou Art. And for 
forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and see the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister that she may share in Christ's victory. And let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. God of loving kindness, Listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your Son has risen from the dead and our hope that your servant, Julie Jean-Charles, will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. The first reading will be proclaimed by Ryan Sidoni. Very 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. It is true, God said his word to the people of Israel, and it was to them that the good news of peace was brought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the Lord of all men. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything that he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem himself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not only by the people, by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have, been, we have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he was ordered us to proclaim that he is people to, and to tell them that God has anointed him to judge everyone who is alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear his witnesses, and that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. In response to the first reading, we sing the second hymn on the leaflet, the Lord's my shepherd, he lives. <laughs> the Lord's my shepherd, I not one, he makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. In for his own name's sake. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. He do I walk in death's dark veil, yet we For thou art with me and thy rod and staff me comfort still. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. My of my foes, my head and us with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. He lives, he lives, he lives, I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore, my 
The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 14, verses 7 to 12. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who eats my flesh, anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood, has eternal life. And I shall raise him up on the last day. 
For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father. So whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven. Not like the bread our ancestors eat. They are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. On behalf of Father Barnabas, who has gone through a procedure and he has to restrict the use of his hands, his hand in particular right hand, so he couldn't come to, to conduct this funeral on behalf, on his behalf, and on my own behalf, and that of my family. I wish to extend condolences to the family of Julie. You know, the world has taught us that life expectancy is all the way up to 75 to 80 years. And when a person passes at an age such as Julie's at 60 years, we think that she has, she had quite a lot of life to live. So the sadness of losing her becomes very evident. And it's understandable how much we mourn at such a loss. It is a natural thing because this is what love calls us to do. We love those around us, especially our family. And losing a loved one is never easy. It can never be. So I'd like once again to extend condolences and ask that you bond together to be a source of support for one another. For this is why we were created, so that together we can help each other to go through the greatest of difficulties. So let the love that you have, you had or have for Julie be that bond that brings you together in order to go through the trials that will come. Now, I don't mean to increase your sorrow, but I want to let you know that you still have some, some difficulty ahead of you. Because after the burial, from my own experience, after the burial was tougher than before the burial, even at the death itself. So I know others must be experiencing the same thing at the loss of a loved one. So I pray that you come together and be a source of support for one another. Now my brothers and sisters, the words that we have listened to of scripture a beautiful words, beautiful messages of life, actually, as the words of scripture are words of life. But the words are not intended for the dead. What we do for the dead is to pray for the dead. And that we must do fervently. Even though sometimes we extract 
some of our prayers from the words of scripture but the words are intended for us who are left behind our experience of loss of, a, of our sister should be for us a teaching a reminder that we are pilgrims we too will walk that path it is a reminder to us that there is need for preparation for that time when we too will meet our maker our savior holy mother church which is the messenger of Christ on earth, the mouthpiece of our God on earth, tries and finds various ways of presenting to us the messages of scripture and the messages are constant. They are in many ways the same presented in different ways and at different times. They are messages of love, messages of obedience, messages of faith, of hope, of charity. And they are invitations to us to repentance, invitations to us to seek the mercy and forgiveness of God. Holy Mother Church calls us all the time to those. And it is for us to listen, listen, understand, and obey. When we look at society today, at least I, I see a repetition of old Israel, how Israel was stubborn and constantly turning away from the instructions of the Lord that he gave to them through his chosen prophets and all those he, he had chosen to guide them. They stubbornly turned away from the teachings of God and revert to their own ways, the ways of sin. Today we look at the world we look at the things that are happening around us and we get the impression that we have no sense of sin because most people tend to believe that as long as they decide that what they do is okay then it's okay We have lost that sense of sin. The human spirit is taking a battery. At this point, it seems at its lowest. Human dignity is almost lost. Look at us, look at the way we dress, look at the way we behave with each other. It seems love is a little bit lost among us. And so the words of scripture serves to remind us who we are, where we are with God. And we should listen to those words and try to find our way back to our creator who is himself love 
who calls us constantly to turn from our ways of sin, seek forgiveness, and come back to Him. St. Paul, in the second reading, Romans 14, 7 to 12, reminds us that we do not live for ourselves. We live for God. It tells us also that we do not belong to ourselves. We don't own ourselves. We belong to God. And to live for God is to love Him and do His biddings. And He gives us some clue how we can accomplish this. He tells us if you love one another, then you love me. Whatever you do to the next person, you are doing it to me. So if you want to love me, then look at the next person and love him. Sometimes we look at the sufferings around us. We look at disabilities in each other and all the difficulties that the world has. And we ask, but why is it so? Why is it happening that way? I believe we should stop to think that the Lord allows those things just so that He tests our love for one another. If a person is disabled, he needs the help of others to get by. He needs the love of others to get by. Imagine a family having a disabled child who needs care 24-7 and that family decides to abandon that child, put that child in a home or ignores the child to the point that the child eventually dies before it's, it ought to have died. That disabled child is a test to us that we should show the love that God is calling us to do in life. We meet people who are in great need, whatever form of need the person may have. If we are capable of helping the person, we should not hesitate because that is the test that the Lord is putting us to. He gives, he puts in our, our lives, he makes us encounter those situations simply to test our love for him. Because if we love those persons that we encounter who are in such need, who are in such dire situations, if we meet them and love them and help them and reach out to them, then we are reaching out to God. Our Lord, my brothers and sisters, is not to accumulate wealth. We cannot keep those things that we accumulate on earth, no matter how fancy they may be. No matter how much we seem to relish in owning things, properties, and those things the world offers as beauty and as pleasure, these things are passing. And in most instances, 
they, call, they cause us to lose our souls because we replace God with those things. Our duty is to use those things to love others, to help others. So my brothers and sisters, the message of scripture is constantly this, that we must love. That we must be obedient. That we must have faith in God. Faith that the Lord has promised us eternal life. And eternal life he will give to us. And that's what the gospel reminds us of. That if we eat and drink of the Lord, we will have the Lord in us. If, we, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have life and life eternal. These words are words of life. These words are words of truth. These words give us hope. These are what Je the words that Jesus spoke to us. And he says to us, believe. Believe. When he did speak those words, the people, the Jews, were questioning him thinking he was mad. It's a madman who, who says he will give us his, his flesh to eat and his blood to drink. We are not cannibals. But Jesus had performed miracles before he said those words that would help them to understand the message that he was bringing out to them. They were not concerned about the message they were concerned about the benefits that they gained from the, mess, from the miracles he had performed. Because he had given them a lot of bread to eat. They, were, they wanted more bread. He spoke to them later and, and they, they, they asked him for signs. You must give us some signs to let us know that you come from God. When he had performed a multitude of miracles before them, they did not believe. The world is like that today. We are hard to believe. And our Lord, through his church, is calling us to have faith and believe in the words that the Lord has spoken to us through his scripture. That the church presents to us. So my brothers and sisters. When we experience such loss as we have today. This we should use as a catalyst. As a means by which we reflect upon our own lives. See where we are with God. Are we right with God? Because judgment day will come one day for us. Will we find ourselves being judged to have eternal life? Or will the judgment be condemnation into eternal damnation? We need to be asking ourselves these questions. Not just today. Every day in our lives. We need to be reflecting on those things. And making the necessary adjust adjustments. To listen to the word of God. Obey. And believe in him. For in Christ. There is eternal life. So may the Lord grant us consolation in our loss and at the same time 
May our reflections over our own lives lead us to repentance and confession of our own weaknesses turning to God with our lives. Amen. Amen. Shall we all stand? The Almighty Father raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. After each prayer, we respond, Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. Together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer for the deceased. For our beloved Julie, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted in the company of the saints and share in the fullness of his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your Prayer for the family. We pray for those who mourn the death of Julie, especially her family and friends. Help us comfort one another in our grief, finding light in time of darkness and faith in time of doubt, that we may find strength and consolation in the hope we have for the resurrection of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer for the nation. Remember, we remember the nation in our prayers. As ruler of the King of Kings and Kings of the earth, we ask our Lord to send his spirit unto those who have power to make our world a better place. Let them act with his image in their minds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer for the sick. We pray for those who are sick in mind or body, for, for those who mourn, and those without faith, hope, or love. May God's love bring them hope and a new strength of purpose. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer for the people. We pray for those here today that our memory of Julie, whom we love, inspires us with a renewed love for all our brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
We now have the um, signing of the register. Uh, and I call on the witnesses to join the Conseri at the table. Nestor Jachals, Malis Jachals, Kevin Jachals, and Leanne Jachals. During this time, we have a special rendition by Eugenia Charles. Also during the signing of the register, we have a collection for the upkeep of the cemetery. Good afternoon, everybody. If I could count all the tears that have fallen, they would seem like an ocean to me. And if the hats were a window that you could look through, all the pain skies you would see. Tears will never stay in the streets of that city, nor is hope death on my mansion.
Amen. We now have um, the vote of thanks. I call on Rainier Joseph to deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. In everything, we give God thanks. On behalf of the family, I would like to say a heartfelt thanks to everyone who, in one way or another, attempted to ease the burden of the family. To all those who whispered a prayer, visited, called, gave contributions in finance, or gifted items, all those who assisted in preparing food reefs and in any other way show your support during this difficult time and last but by no means least a huge thank you to all of you who showed up here today to lend your support it is highly appreciated thank you to all Shall we all stand for the blessing? With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us offer our prayers to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we pray for our sister. We will pray three Hail Marys. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our day. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day, we shall joyfully greet her again. When the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death. During the blessing, we sing the fourth hymn on the leaflet, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet. That's it. Wow. 
has deed that grace appeared. The hour I first believed through many dangers Let our response be, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister, Julie, that together with all who have died in Christ, she will, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Julie in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May the angels lead you into paradise, Julie. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Now normally the next stage of prayers would be said at the door and then at the cemetery. And since the burial will be done in Deriso, we will do them here at the altar. And that's done because the congregation has developed not a very good habit when we process to the door that they precede us and go outside even when we have prayers to, to say at the door and then remove the power. So we are confined to saying all the prayers right here until we, we can regain the habit of waiting for the procession to the door to happen with the family alone. So, let us continue our prayers for our sister. Our sister Julie has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven with faith and hope in eternal life. Let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister. Together, may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our sister may rest in the place that is prepared for her, until you awaken her in glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then she will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our sister Julie from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like he is in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. God of holiness and power, Accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Julie. Do not count her deeds against her, for in her heart she desired to do your will. As her faith united her to your people on earth, so may your mercy join her to the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. 
merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble, hear your people who cry out to you in their need, and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, Amen. and let the perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ and take our sister to her place of rest. God be with you all. As we take our sister to a final place of rest, I remind you to grab all your belongings and we join in singing our recessional song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Kong mah? Kong Kong? Kong Kong?
sing. 